What's good guys, this is Vahography. I'm Vahagen, your rock and roll photographer. In this video, I'm going to review the 50mm 1.4D Nikon Prime Lens, this little guy right here. And I'm going to tell you why this might be a great option for you beginners that are looking to pick up your second or third lens and don't want to spend too much money. This might be a great option for you. In this video, we will be going through the specs in detail of this lens. I will do some sample photos uh, out and about for you guys. And I will also compare this lens with more expensive 58 millimeter 1.4 G lens that I have. I will do video of the two lenses side by side. So you see the difference. Obviously the 58 is a longer lens, more modern lens. It's a much better lens. It cost uh, probably 10 or 12 times more than this lens. But just for the heck of it, we'll compare both on video mode. One important factor, if you're looking to buy this lens, you're a beginner photographer and you're really on a budget, you're looking for something fixed, 50 millimeter focal length, something faster than your 2.8 or your f4 zoom lenses. This might be a good option for you guys, but one thing to keep in mind about this lens is that it won't autofocus unless your cameras have autofocus motors built in. So what I mean by that is do a Google search and make sure that the DSLR that you currently have has autofocus motors. Most DSLRs these days have autofocus motors. So just do a quick Google search and make sure that camera is not on the list, the one that you own. Okay, just like I always do, here are some in detail specs of this lens. Quick little story for you guys, how I got to owning this lens. Saw an ad on Craigslist and the guy listed it as autofocus, not functional. So I knew, what if this guy has a camera without autofocus motors and he thinks that the focus is not functioning. He listed it for $100. So I give him a call and he says, if you come right now, I'll give it to you for 80 bucks. And I knew there's a chance that this lens works. He just doesn't have a camera that's capable of autofocusing. So sure enough, I get there, I screw it on and autofocus, bam, works like a charm. And I let him know that it's not that the autofocus doesn't work. I was really honest with the guy. You should have seen the seller's face when I started autofocusing my camera. <laughs> we had a good laugh and I asked him, you know what, I'll give you another 20 bucks. He's like, no, nah, it's okay. You know, I promised you 80, you'll take it for 80. So that was a good story, good lens, good purchase. The moral of the story, the more you know about a specific item, the better for you buying or selling. So it's always good to know everything there is to know. Okay, let's talk autofocus speed for a second. Um, it's not that slow, it focuses pretty quick. However, it's not that quiet like a G lens. Uh, it's gonna clank around, that's fine. But if you're doing photography, who cares? Sounds like one of those old printers, right? From the yesteryear. But again, not an issue when you're using this lens out in the real world, shooting pictures. I mean, there, it's focused. There, bam. Let's do a close focus test, shall we? The only drawback of this lens, I think, it doesn't close focus that well, but let's give it a shot. Let's take a picture of this microphone. So yeah, about a foot and a half, foot and a half away. Not bad at all. So the 51.4D lens, autofocus. The aperture ring, as you could see right here, you could set it to the orange dial and lock it into place and that will allow your modern camera to adjust aperture setting. Uh, however, you can also do it manually with the aperture ring. As you can see, click it right into place. And like I said, if you're on a budget and you're looking for a 50 millimeter, we like to call them a nifty 50. Nikon shooters, this might be your option right here. The G lens obviously is a more modern lens, uh, the 50 millimeter 1.4 G lens. I say that lens is gonna run you about double the price 
from what this guy is going for right now. Might be a little more, 3350, uh, maybe 280. However, this little guy you could pick up used for 140, 150 dollars. I have a certain love for this lens. I like the size factor of this lens, the weight. I love to slap this lens on the camera and just roam around wide open or f1.8, 2, f2, and just shoot some candid natural light candids. However, I'll tell you right now, at 1.4 wide open, it's not the sharpest lens. Doesn't really matter, that's not a real deal breaker for me. And remember, you're only spending a buck 25, a buck 50 for this lens. So just to have it in your toolkit, if anything as a backup to your 50 or 58G, that's fine with me. I'm totally cool with that. For beginner photographers, this 50 millimeter D lens is a great option if you're on a tight budget. Chances are you already have a walk around zoom lens, maybe a kit lens that came with the camera. And mind you, you're a total beginner right now. You have the kit lens. Maybe you have a telephoto lens for portraits and you're looking to get something faster. And when, when I say faster, I mean better in low light. This is a cheap alternative to spending three or four or $500 on a Nikon G lens. If you have a mirrorless camera, and you have the FTZ adapter, D lenses will not autofocus on your mirrorless camera. You can control the aperture value on a mirrorless with the dial, but you cannot autofocus. That being said, it's, again, it's not really a deal breaker. I can shoot video all day long with this thing. Uh, on an FTZ adapter, you know, it's very easy to to obtain focus on a mirrorless camera. However, the action on the lens, how the lens feels when you're focusing, it's not the best ever. It's not as smooth as I would like it to be. This is a good lens for interviews, the uh, B-roll video camera, you know, set the focus and, and you rock and roll, boom. Good lens for that. Okay, what do you say we take this lens out, mount it onto one of my cameras and take a few photos outside? What do you guys think? Should we do that? Let's do that. All right guys, so I just came back, took some shots with the 50 millimeter 1.4 D lens and I asked my daughter if uh, she wanted to be my subject of the day for this lens, for this review. So I loaded the raw files in Lightroom, as you could see here. And uh, I'll show you some examples right now. So as you could see, this is shot wide open. And uh, like I said, it's not the sharpest lens in the toolkit as to be expected wide open. However, you can pretty much tell, I really like the background blur that I'm getting here. And in this image right here, we can go ahead and, you know, make our adjustments, make it look a little nicer. You know, I shot in raw, so you pretty much get an idea of what you can do with these files. But the whole point of this is for you to show you the performance of this $80 lens. At 1.4, you're not gonna have the sharpest performance, but you can easily add some sharpness in Lightroom. Right here, I'm at F2, as you can see here. And like I said, once you uh, stop it down a little bit, then you're gonna be achieving more sharpness, as you can see here, around the eyes. And even at F2, the background blur is still nice. Bring up the shadows and then add some vibrance. Add some vibrance, you know, you get that, all those greens in the background out. Not bad, huh? For a lens that's $100. Here's another example at 1.4, actually wide open, a little closer. As you could see, wide open, 1.4, not bad at all. Not bad at all, a little closer. My subject's a little closer to me. And you achieve more isolation. This will look awesome black and white too, look at that. Look at that, let me show you a couple more examples here. And I guess this was somebody walking by here, maybe on a bicycle, I don't remember, but look at how it's, you can't even tell what that is. Look at the background blur, which they call the bokeh, 50 millimeter, 1.4. Not a bad result, guys. What do you guys think? 
No flash used here, all natural light, obviously. Look at that sharpness at F2. And look at that background blur. The hair looks nice. But pretty acceptable results, like I said. This is professional results at, with a $100 Nifty 50 lens. So this portrait is taken at 1.4, wide open. Um, and you can see the background blur. We had some leaves on the floor here. But I really wanted you guys to see the bokeh of this lens. I mean, look at look at the sides here. Look at very nice, very nice subject isolation. It renders the background really nicely. Like I said, the whole goal of this video, this section, is for you guys to see the uh, performance of this lens, this 50 millimeter. And, you know, the adjustments. You know, I. I can do whatever I want with them. You can do whatever you want with them. You know, if you like a lot of contrast, if you like less contrast exposure, you know, I was just messing with the settings here. Let me reset it so you guys could see what it looks like as shot. That's what it looks like. Okay, so right here in this image, I'm at F2 once again, as you see. Again, really nice background blur and it isolates the subject amazingly in my opinion and for what this lens is i mean you cannot complain i mean it give you professional results all day all night small lightweight compact lens i mean can't ask for more than that for the this price point you know obviously you can get a more expensive 50 millimeter who uses lightroom for their post-processing lightroom has been good to me over the years and of course now it's subscription based, so you pay monthly for that. All I did was just added some shadows. Look at look at the dress. Yeah guys, like I said, the 50mm 1.4D lens. Hopefully this gives you a somewhat of an example of what the images can look like. Performance of this lens, rock and roll. All right, why don't we do a comparison video now? We'll set up this lens on the camera and we'll do a side-by-side -side video clip comparison. Again, the mounting the 58G, a $1,500 lens, to a $125 Nifty 50 1.4D lens, side by side, both wide open. We'll see what happens. All right, who likes comparison videos, guys, like this? You got the 50 1.4D on this camera. You got the 58 1.4G on this camera. Okay, video clip time. Side-by-side -side comparison, guys. Why don't we do a split screen? 58 1.4G on one side, 50 1.4D on the other side. I don't have a 50 millimeter G lens to do a side-by-side -side comparison on. I don't have one with me right now, but the 58 millimeter is the closest thing I have. Actually, it's better because this is a $1,500 lens versus a $100 D lens, so. What do you guys think? Side-by-side -side comparison? Can you see the quality differences? Split screen? What do you guys think? Leave a comment down below. So this is at 1.4. Why don't we stop it down a little bit? Let's stop it down a little. F2. F2. Stop it down a little, just a tad, to F2. Stop it down a little more, shall we? So this is F2.8 now. Both cameras, F2.8. I bumped up the ISO just a tad uh, from 160 to 250 ISO just so the light it doesn't get too dark while I'm filming. So this is f2.8. f4 shall we? Let's do f4. f4 guys, this is f4 at ISO 400. f4 at ISO 400. Again, I mean the 58G, I have it on AF, it's tracking me pretty good. The 50D, it does not autofocus on the mirrorless, so it's set to manual focus. But both F4. And let's do one final one, just for the hell of it. Let's do 5.6. So F5.6 on both cameras. What do you guys think? 5.6. Leave a comment down below. Is it worth 100 bucks? I think it is, 125 bucks. What I use this lens for? Well, like I said, I roam around with it, maybe at a wedding, event photography. Uh, if this is the only lens that I have with me, I can get away with portraits. 
with this lens. However, like I said, it's not the ideal portrait lens to have. If I'm taking a trip and I don't want to take too many lenses with me and something to throw around, if it gets damaged, who cares? Street photographers, it's a good lens for street photography. You know, if you're on a budget and, and I get this question asked all the time, what's a good lens other than my kit lens to buy if I want something faster and at a fixed focal length and I don't want to like spend too much money on? This is why I'm making this video, guys. The 50 millimeter 1.4D Nikon lens. All right, guys, thanks for watching my review on the 50 millimeter 1.4D lens. If you like videos like this, lens reviews, camera reviews, all things photography, please like and subscribe to this channel. Hit the bell icon to be notified when I upload new content. This is Vahography. I'm Vahagen, your rock and roll photographer. And remember, like I always say at the end of the videos, rock and roll.